So today we're going to do the handover on the Chasson C656 Flash. We're going to start with the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. Starting with the fill up point. Fill up is just here, diesel into there, and then into the cab. You have your bonnet release catch, which is just there on the passenger side. Underneath the bonnet, the latch is just in line with the chasson badge. Once that you've got the bonnet open, not many things that you need to know underneath here. Uh, the main thing that you need to know is if you're ever going to jump start the vehicle. If that is the case, you've got your negative onto here, and just down there underneath that cap is where your positive outlet goes. Just onto there. Other things just to point out is your engine oil's there, and just below is your dipstick. You've then got your brake disc fluid, your engine coolant, and then your washer fluid, which is just in there. Moving around the van, you've got your gas locker, which is just in there. Next up, you have your Truma vent. What we say is when you're on site, you need to remove this cover, and that'll allow uh, the, the boiler system to vent. In essence, this is the vehicle's chimney. Uh, when you are traveling, so you've done on site and you're, you're moving on to your, uh, to your next location, Stick this cover back on because you don't want any dirt getting into that, that vent there. And that'll just clip in. Next you can see you've got your fridge vent, vents which are just there. And then moving on, you've got your toilet cassette. Pinch it, open it up. To remove this, the main thing that you need to know uh, and remember is that the blade on the toilet is always closed. Once that's closed, push up on the handle and you can slide out and the whole system will slide out like so. That'll then latch back into place, and then you're good to go. Next, you've got your garage here. With some space underneath. Moving around the back of the van, you've got your bike rack which is set up. And your reversing camera which is just up at the top there. Next up, moving around the vehicle, you then have your access point into your, again, your garage. With some storage underneath there. And as I say, you can remove this to make for a full height garage. Next, moving on, you've got your drain down point. Your first main drain down point is your wastewater drain down. You know that because of this sticker here. If you look underneath the vehicle, you can see a gray pipe, which is just there. On top of the gray pipe, you've got a black handle. If you pull that towards you, that'll open the system and that's gonna drain the entire system full of water, that wastewater system that is. And then when you push it back into place, that's gonna seal um, the wastewater. Next along in this, this is your convenience locker. In here you've got your um, fresh water tank and also your electrics. Here's your convenience locker. As I say, this is your fresh water tank. To fill this up, simply pull this out, undo the cap, hose pipe in, and you can fill up with water. This will take about 120 litres. I'll move on to your drain down points uh, in a second, however if you're ever wanting to drain down the whole system um, to 20, uh, 20 litres for example, so a quick drain down, you can do so with this little clip which is just here. If I flick that up, that will then drain the system down. It will quick drain the, uh, the system down to 20 litres as I say, but for that to work you need to go into the van and activate the pump. To drain down the whole system, you'll notice underneath you've got another one of these stickers. As I say, this is for your fresh water drain down. Underneath the vehicle, you've got two pipes. You've got one with a cap on the end 
uh, and the other one without. The one without is a breather pipe, so don't worry about that. And as I say, the other one with the cap on um, is keeping the water from coming out. To drain the whole system, all you've got to do is remove that cap, and then that will drain the whole system down. Um, so it'll drain that whole 120 litres out of the fresh water tank. So you've got your fresh water tank here, and as I say, your waste water tank just at the back there. And that's how you drain them, them both. Moving back into your convenience locker, on this side, you have where all your electrics are. You can see you've got your fuses here. And then just here is your RCD breaker. If the van ever trips, you need to come to this point here. Moving on the inside of the vehicle, you've got your bunk beds at the back. Your kitchen in the midpoint, bathroom to the left of me, and then your sleeping and dining area at the front. Next to the habitation door is your control panel. Your first button, if you click that, is your master button, and that'll turn on all the lights in the vehicle and activate everything in the van. Next along, you can see is your light button, click that, that turns on and off all your lights on the inside of the van. Next along is your pump, if I click that, that'll activate the pump. Uh, important thing with this is only activate the pump when you've got water in the system. You're gonna uh, also, um, with your pump, uh, when you get onto site, you'll click this button, you'll then go to all your taps, including the shower, turn them to hot, and then turn them on. What that's gonna do is it's gonna pull fresh water from your fresh water tank into the boiler, priming the boiler, and then your pipe system. It'll then sp uh, splat, uh, spurt and splutter, uh, and when it runs steadily, uh, you know you've primed your system. Once you've done that for the hot water, flick it over to the cold, and do the exact same. Once you've done that, and it's running steadily, you can leave it. You don't need to turn the pump off, leave it on. All of your taps are on isolation um, switches, so they don't need turning off and on each time. So it'll only activate the pump when you need it. Next to the pump switch is another light button. That's for your door light, which is on the outside. And then down here, you've got your habitation battery, which will show what we're at. It'll show your vehicle battery. And then it'll also show your fresh water tank, which is just there. Your final button, which is just here, um, will activate your the brightness of the screen, so you can change that. Moving on to the final bit of the control panel, you've got your Webasto heating system. As we know, this is a, a diesel heating system. Um, to activate this, simply turn the dial um, to the red here. What that'll do is you'll get a green little triangle on the knob here lighting up. Your lights in the vehicle will then start flickering. That's a sign that it's working and it's warming up. It'll flicker for about 15 minutes until they'll, they'll return to a, a steady and, uh, and continuous light. Um, and the same thing is when you turn the, um, the knob off and turn the heater off, um, again it'll flicker because it's cooling down the system. Next is your bathroom area. In your bathroom you've got your swivel cassette which is here, your flush which is just there, and then your toilet blade. Your blade can be clo uh, open and closed just by this here. Push away from you to open, push away to close. Once you've closed the blade uh, after use, you can then close it. You've then got your button down here to activate your flush. The blue button is the close. If you click that, that'll activate the flush. As I say, you need your um, your pump on to activate the flush. Uh, and then you'll have a red little light or an amber light just to indicate when it's full. Once it's full, you need to empty the system as soon as possible. Next on your kitchen area, you have your oven and grill and your hob. You have an electric hob along with two gas rings. This works the exact same as a normal domestic hob. The only difference is you need to hold in your igniter to then feed the gas through. 
opposite the kitchen space is the fridge. This is a three-way fridge. If I hold this, it'll turn the fridge on. As I say, this is a three-way fridge and uses three ways to fuel the fridge. You've got your mains, you've got your hookup, you've got your, uh, your gas, and then you've also got your 12-volt system. As well as your fridge and your fuels, which are just there, you've also got, you can see your temperature, which can alter by clicking this button here. At the moment you can see it's flashing because I'm not currently hooked up. It'll flash whenever um, it's trying to fuel the, uh, the fridge with something that it hasn't got. In this case, if you leave this on for long enough, you'll get an error code and you'll have to reset your fridge. The best option is if I keep on tapping through this, the options, a will select whatever fuel I've got. At the moment, I have some gas, and that's why it's using that, that, that flame there. Hold, just to turn off, just like so. Moving into the TV cabinet, you've got your TV here, which is just on a slide out rail. If I pull this down, I can then slide out the entire rail, make sure that that clicks in. And then in your TV cabinet, you can see that you've got two boxes. You've got one which is flashing. That's for your solar panel. You don't need to connect that. Um, you can just leave that as it is. And then you've also got your max view aerial, which is just up at the top. You can see that that's on. When you're using your TV, you need to make sure that that's on. And you can see that blue light just there. That, that tells you that it's on. You also have a dial on there to... Uh, to change and mess around with the uh, with the signal uh, providing on, on where you are. In your lounge area I'll just quickly explain how this makes up. For this your table is uh, is used to create the base. You drop that and that connects onto these lower areas here. Just onto there. That allows it to take the weight. Using the back cushions, you can then make this up into a single bed. It's the exact same with this side, only it's a double bed. Drop the table down, rest on them, them areas there, just to take the weight. You can then use the cushions to make that area into a bed. Up at the top, you've got your big double bed, which is just here. With your ladder to it. To achieve some more headspace here going into the cab, you can lift this up, which is just on gas struts, and that'll lift to the ceiling. Underneath your single seat, you've also got your boiler drain down point, which is your third drain down point in the van. Underneath here, when you remove this slat, you can see you've got your boiler drain down point, which is just there on the yellow tab. When the yellow tab is in the, this position, the down position, you know that it's closed. When it's up, it's open. In the cab as well, you've also got a curtain, which will just pull around and meet into the middle there. That's been the handover video on the 656. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.